Hello everybody, uh, it's me again. Uh, I'm, and I wanted here to talk to you about, uh, I think, one the, the biggest the, the biggest threat on API economy. Yes, we have technical session on the other side, uh, um, talks about hypermedia, RPC design, a lot of things. But I think that the first, uh, today with the first threat on API economy is something else, some the, something else that technique technical things, something else that um, more um, design or stuff like that. Uh, it's more about politics, politics and APIs. And I will explain here in 20 minutes uh, my vision of why do we need trust in the API economy. Uh, who, who I am, uh, Mini Major Wee, I'm uh, the CEO of webshell.io. Uh, I'm also the um, manager of the API500.com and I will talk about it uh, during this session. <laughs> and I'm also uh, uh, the manager of apijoy.tumblr.com. API Please see it after, because I think you will, <laughs> yes, some guys already know it. Uh, it's a very funny uh, GIF style uh, Tumblr about uh, paints, every developer paints using API. But after, because I will see you love, and I, and I want to you to hear me, please. Um, okay. Yeah, today uh, it will be the only French slide. <laughs> uh, yes, today we have a new kind of distribution and we, have, um, we are in a world uh, with the numer numerical era which is developer-centric. And it's developer-centric and so developers became the only distribution channel through APIs for making application using your data or your service. And because these developers are now the center of this programmable web, uh, developers become the, the, the single point of failure of the, bus of the 2.0 business. And the reason why a lot of companies try to acquire, to try to uh, evangelize uh, to, uh, to developers. But w today when you have an API, so you want to reach developers and you make marketing to developers. But for the API economy, I think and it will be my opinion during, during these 20 minutes, but I think the big issue for all API economy and all API platform is to keep trust. To keep trust in the ecosystem. And why, um, uh, why trust today is in danger? Uh, just a little um, comparison to, uh, with the in real life business. In real life business, for example, with the 20th century uh, supply chain, you had specific uh, cars and manufacturers, for example, the car industry, and uh, everything was completely, um, completely centralized. Now with the 20 21st century supply chain, everything is distributed exactly how I feel with the programmable web and with APIs. And to my mind, we can make an exact comparison between um, the, the classic, the, the, this kind of uh, uh, decentralized supply chain management and data and API supply chain management. Um, this, you can see it as any API provider making a service, making a specific data that you need for your application. And, and after, my question was about what is trust? Trust is something that it's very long to build Yes, very long to build. Sometimes you have some, uh, uh, some issue to, <laughs> to build it. And even um, you cannot prove trust. You cannot say, oh, you can trust me. It's time. It's a, a long relationship to make it. But you have only one, uh, in only one case, you can make everything break. And yeah, and it's very hard to keep trust after, uh, uh, to, to, to after a break and to, to, to find again trust. And, and what? After, I have to say, uh, I thought, what is trust in business? Um, in business, it's, I think, the same case. It's that what you promise me, you will give me in time, in good, uh, uh, with the price I, I've paid, no, no surprise. And this is uh, the trust. Um, it's no surprise when you, make, uh, when you make business, when you make partnerships. Uh, and th this is the reason why we have invented all the, the, the 20th uh, industry, for example, the car industry. I don't reinvent the wheel. I, uh, I, uh, I build my company supporting on other suppliers and then I can make my own business on top of the existing businesses. 
uh, today the car manufacturers doesn't make wheels again, doesn't make uh, uh, specific leather for the inside of the car. They trust the ecosystem because they know they will have uh, a supplier to, to make it. And in the business, and it was one of my uh, last experience before making uh, what I'm doing now, which is a web shell, um, I, um, I make notation between companies. I was, ma no, I was making notation for a company make for business which is um, for making business with another. For example, if a company say, oh, I want to make business with this one, please give me a notation and say, oh, who I can trust this company. And I try exactly to apply the same model to the API economy because to my mind it's exactly the same. And we have a lot of scores, national debt in Europe who have some debates of score of national debt. Uh, on companies, this is what I, I've did. And even, for example, in US, you have score on people for credit rating. Uh, do, uh, do I can trust uh, this guy for, for, for credit? And in specific uh, business 2.0, it's numerical business, I think it's exactly the same. Trust is that the data or the service you promise me, you'll give me. It's exactly the same. And for example, today when you are making an application, uh, you'll use more and more APIs in some mashups, but mashups is 2006. Uh, so we, we say API workflow, and I use five, six, seven APIs in my application. It can be Facebook, Twitter, Foursquare, Twilio, lot, lot of APIs. But only w if only one fail, maybe all my application can fail, exactly if a classical supply chain. And because of this, uh, trust is very important. The best example is the Siri application. Uh, Siri in 2010 was using uh, 40 APIs. Uh, I had a discussion with uh, Dr. Julia, which is the uh, director of Siri now, which is French. <laughs> but uh, he said that now they use 55 APIs. And he told me that it was a mess to have a supply chain management of services uh, with 55 APIs. Then it's the reason why uh, uh, Apple has to buy Siri and to make exclusive partnerships service with service providers, uh, with data providers, for be sure that the application will be, will be always uh, reliable and will always work. And, uh, and so it was uh, in the Apple case that everything has to work every time, but even in this case, Siri sometimes uh, is, still, uh, is still debugging. So, now I will explain the four threats on API economy which can break distrust at every time. The first one is the most technical. Uh, and because it's the most te technical, I think it's the most uh, easy to uh, avoid. It's API changes. Yes, all in this room you know that API changes, API are evolving because APIs are designed to face to new uh, challenges with developers and to be always uh, adapted to the, your ecosystem. And you know the, this, this picture, it's often, it, it arrives very often. Uh, and the three, um, three cases uh, of it, uh, I, I've just uh, um, uh, put three cases. One of the cases is Salesforce. Salesforce has um, no breaks since seven years, uh, only updates, but the first version of the API is still working uh, now. Uh, some updates, yeah, three minutes updates per year, I think. But uh, Salesforce is one of the, of the good players in keeping the API always reliable and stable. You have some, um, some APIs, for example, Facebook, change often, I said every two weeks, sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. But one of the reasons is that Facebook has 7,000 versions live, different version live, and he make competition between these versions and when a new version is uh, won the competition, uh, they change the API in this way. It's because they are improving each time the website, so they improve the API. They, they make the, the interface change. And one, and maybe for, for me it's the worst case, it's for example face.com. Face.com has been acquired by Facebook, but with this hack acquisition, uh, Facebook has cut the API with no, no, no warranty, no notification. Yes, we buy, we cut, and no issue like that. And in the startup economy, we see a lot of startups to say, in their uh, for all questions part, they say, oh, if I'm bought by a big company, we ensure you that we will keep the API alive. But now it's very 
surprising to find this in a four question. The, 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 the technical part, developers know it. We know that uh, software are evolving. We know there is always new versions. And we can understand it for APIs. But now, the three next parts I'm, I'm talking are more focused on juridical issues, legal issues. And it's the most difficult part to, to, uh, to avoid. Even that uh, uh, um, uh, legal, is leg legal things may sometimes uh, seem like code. It's strange lines uh, finishing by uh, uh, commas. But uh, um, as developer, I, I, don't understand, uh, I don't understand it. Yes, thermal service, the, the, the biggest case is, uh, this year is the Twitter case. They changed uh, two years ago uh, the, uh, their API term of service. Now they change it this year very drastically. And, uh, and yes, it's a bad, bad signal for the API economy. And just an example, there was, uh, there is many, there was many manifestos about uh, the Twitter change, some developers' manifesto. But in the, in the Silicon Valley, there was two investors' manifesto who say that they will not invest anymore on company based on Twitter API. And uh, I have a GIF uh, on the apijoytumblr.com who, the, the <laughs> who made the buzz about, uh, about it. Um, but yes, it's true that if I cannot tr uh, trust an, an API provider, I cannot, uh, I cannot make investors or any customer trust about my business. And this is what the case of, uh, of Twitter. And a few months ago, we, with Scanline there, we, 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 we tried a first approach. Uh, the first approach is to follow um, a movement, which is uh, a, a t it was term of service didn't read. It was crowdsourced uh, term of service uh, um, um, analysis. And we tried it, to, we begin it to make uh, for, uh, on API. It's, it's live on api-tos-dr.info. Um, API but we, um, um, uh, with tossdr.info, uh, we, we've seen that there, has, uh, there are a lot of issues for gathering all the advices. So uh, we, try, we are waiting to see them, how they make it, then to make it for APIs. But we, we think we need um, uh, some initiative uh, on this way. The second step, uh, the second threat is API neutrality. It's it's a big term. I try to explain it uh, following the net neutrality, network neutrality. And the network neutrality said three things, three main things. The first is non-discrimination to any third party. When you, have, when you are on, on internet or your telco provider, you cannot, uh, oh, yes, you cannot, the pro, you, your provider cannot say, oh, I prefer you than you, so I cut you and, I don't, uh, and you, I let you with a high uh, bandwidth. No, the network neutrality has been the most important thing on networks and on internet for making innovation possible. Because people uh, were um, trusting the, the network neutrality, they were able to build innovation and take risks because they trust the ecosystem. And th the first part of this trust was non-discrimination between third party. If I, I'm, I will be able to access to the network every time, I can trust and I can make take risks and build innovati innovative things. The second is limited discrimi discrimination without tiering. Um, yes, we need to make business to make things evolve too. And this, one, just want to say that for the same amount paid, you will have the same level of service. For example, between a free user and a paying user, you can make difference. But between two paying users for the same price, you cannot say that one is better than the other, make more bandwidth to another uh, than, uh, than to the first one. And even to free users, every free user is equal on the, on the network. The, the last thing is first come, first saved. Yes, if I receive a data first and a request first, I have to answer this request first. No enqueuing, no, uh, uh, no hierarchy between, uh, between users. This is was for the network neutrality. And to make it simple for the API neutrality, because API are following the web, and the web become programmable, I just think that net neutrality is exactly the same as the open API neutrality. It's exactly the same things. Uh, and for example, why Twitter is not respecting API neutrality is that Twitter said for, to LinkedIn, to Tumblr, that, oh, what do you do with my API? Is, I don't find it well for my business model. 
because uh, maybe I, I don't have one really, <laughs> really understandable. Um, but because of this, I don't want to work with you anymore, and I, work, and I will work with others instead of you. This is not neutral position. And the, I made an article on it, which is uh, uh, APIs too big to fail, that because they are mainstream, because Twitter is the only provider of tweets, he, he, came, he, he, came, um, he can become to be not neutral, and we're still using it, because Twitter is the only provider of tweets. But it's kind of antitrust, exactly as uh, antitrust behavior, exactly as Microsoft uh, in 1998 with uh, Windows and uh, uh, Internet Explorer. And the case was that uh, Microsoft, because Microsoft was a mainstream platform with Windows, he has to be neutral with every application built on it. And my question today is, does Twitter or does uh, Facebook, does mainstream platforms, has to be neutral on top of them and let every application build on it because they are mainstream? They already won the match. And I'm, I'm, uh, I worked with a, a pyramid of needs. Oh, there is a first step there, which is basic access, because I've seen FTP APIs. Yes, it's true that some providers, when you ask them for an API, they send you a FTP link. It's a first step, yes, of, uh, to be open. Uh, but then, after basic access, I've made a, a second step, which is consistency. Yes, uh, is the API some reliable? Is some architecture, SOAP, REST? Uh, and um, after API design, yes, it's better with when it is REST JSON, uh, when you have uh, Exploration Console and the building bricks of uh, Kin are very good for that, for the uh, how to de well design an API for developers. Uh, and you, for example, URLs and all the stuff like that. Then the step, uh, or the step beyond is policy. Does the policy of the API I use is well for my business? Is the business model is viable? Uh, the question is, is a free API is completely reliable for a company which, uh, which doesn't uh, earn money yet? Yeah, it's, it's a good question because it's the case of Twitter. Uh, trying to find their business model, they, they, they cut uh, some, uh, uh, some companies. Uh, for example, Twilio has a pay-as-you-go business model and it's better for the, eco the ecosystem because you know that every dollar has the same value. So if I pay the service, it's, uh, I trust the service, and everybody can trust the service uh, on it. And confidence, confidence is the way that you trust in the company making it. Uh, for example, when Google launched an API, sometimes you can trust Google that he will uh, let, keep the API uh, alive. And for example, on Google Term of Services, every deprecated API uh, will be um, still alive until 2015. Also, it's a long time deprecation, and, uh, and they, uh, they enforce it in their uh, terms of conditions. Then on top of it is neutrality. Neutrality is not, uh, um, it's very hard in business to be neutral. You always have specific conditions, but it's a pattern to follow and to say that, yes, you, you, you will be neutral against, uh, um, uh, towards every user uh, uh, if they respect, uh, if they respect uh, your, your business too. And for, to my mind, the last, uh, the last threads, it's uh, the, the most recent one, is the copyright. Yes, we did, this year we have heard about the copyright of APIs. And the case, uh, the case is a little, very legal thing, but uh, I wanted to, to explain it. Um, what we, copyright between Europe and the US are not exactly the same, but follow the same patterns. Um, I can copyright what is a custom creation of my mind. Uh, and written or drawn, it's, it's, it's the same. But what I cannot copyright, it's com some kind of lists, some kind of something which is not uh, completely custom. Uh, the example is the yellow page. Yellow page, for example. <laughs> it's a list of numbers, of, uh, numbers and names uh, ranged by alph alphabetical order. So there is no custom creation. Everybody would have made the same, uh, the, the same list with the same numbers and the same names. Also, there is no copyright on it. You cannot copyright something like that. But if I make the top 100 people I love uh, in this list, yes, I love a lot of people, uh, but the top, one, the top 100, it will be my list. And it will be, one, uh, it will be not another uh, person list. 
And this is the case of an API. And this is the case of API design. And we have API management solution there, API design specialists. And the question was during the case uh, of Oracle versus Google. Oracle said to Google, yes, you use my APIs and I, I, don't, allow the, uh, I don't allow you uh, this because you infringe my copyright. Um, the question between the case was, what is API design? Is a design of an API is copyrightable? Uh, does a list of methods of URLs can be copyrightable? Where is the custom creation on the API? And, and uh, I, I won't let some time in the question to have your, your vision as an API management solution or <coughs> our uh, API designer. Uh, because the, most, uh, the, the, um, the, most, the more design you make, uh, the more copyright you put, you put in it. <laughs> and it's exactly the, the, maybe the issue we, we, we have uh, on the uh, API economy. Yeah, and just for, for this, I, I tried to make some solution. Uh, um, I, I made five criteria to rate an API, uh, approximately the same as rating a company as a supplier. The, the five things uh, I've made, uh, it was API design and documentation because it's a sign that you respect developers and you uh, invest in developer community. Uh, on the right is API policy, yes, terms and condition and business model. Is a free business model, is it reliable or I'll pay as you go maybe better? Uh, the API ecosystem, how many applications are running? Uh, what is the status history of the API? Is the API uh, breaks often uh, or not? And if the API is down uh, often or not? API team involvement, uh, how does the API team is involved in the company? Is the API is outsourced or inside the company? And then trust in the global company. Uh, in trust in the final API provider and the policy against, uh, uh, towards developer uh, too. And with the mix, with a kind of notation on this, we can find a global notation about trust. Maybe it's far for you, uh, for people in the back, but it's three kind of notation, low risk for your business, just some updates, you can, f you can trust uh, the API. Uh, the risk, and then in orange, risk of perturbing your business, the API may break, terms conditions may change and perturbs your business model and you have to adapt strongly. And on C, it's risk of breaking your business and that one day to another, your company will, doesn't have any business anymore because of, of, of the API. And this kind of notation we've made for companies, it was more based on, uh, on, uh, on the variability uh, of the company. For example, a company who doesn't earn a lot of money and lose money three years at a row, there were always C, say for, for example, because you, ca you don't know if in the next four years it will be still alive. And for APIs, it goes faster, but we can have this kind of notation. Yes, for having uh, 10 levels, I put a D, don't use this API, but I don't want an API rating agency to say don't use an API, just the risk uh, of putting it. And just to finish, the why open question, yes, Steve Klabnik yesterday made a very good conference on it. I don't want to compete with him. <laughs> it's not the same level. But, um, and, but it's the case of the API days. Um, every, every civilization has been um, uh, described by the way it communicates and it makes trade. Uh, first in the prehistory, uh, then we have the roads, we have the um, uh, uh, boats way. Uh, maritime, uh, maritime way, of, I don't know how to say English. Uh, then we have the, the airports, new way of communication, new way of make tr making trade, making exchange. Now we have a numerical way, which is neutral. And every, every time in the, in the, uh, in the, in the past, the, every civilization and every new way of communication has to stay open to, be, to, to make people trust in it. In a road, for example, if a road is open and you know that it will, be, it will be open, you can say, oh, my suppliers is at the end of the road and I will use it. If I cannot trust that the road will be still open, I cannot trust the, uh, the, the, the ecosystem that I will use the API provider, the, the provider there. And because of these roads and all this trade exchange and all this ecosystem has to stay open, I think we've known from a classical civilization to a numerical civilization, to a programmable civilization, civilization based on APIs, because it's the best way to communicate, it's uh, automated communication. And this is the reason why API has to stay open and to stay neutral, 
to better trust the ecosystem, and I wanted to have your uh, advice uh, on it. Thank you very much.